when I did the review of the Sporty 40, I was talking about resonance and reactance. And when you can get re reduce your reactance down to zero, your antenna becomes resonant. So Alan asked, what is reactance? So yep. Joe, do you wanna, I know you've got a really good explanation of, of what reactance is. All right, Alan, I hope you're still with us here. I, I see you in the comments here a couple of times. So um, let's just step back to a second. Let's talk about DC theory for a second. Uh, e equals I times R is that voltage equals current times resistance, okay? So resistance ohms always think direct current okay so that's always easy because it's kind of it's a it's a one-to-one -one, um relationship there when we start alternating current going back and forth back and forth back and forth uh we start to get capacitance and we start to get inductance okay in capacitance and inductance also in they impede the uh they 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 are they act against the flow of current in an ac circuit okay so you, we don't have reactants in a dc circuit purely dc now you have to understand too that we can have both ac and dc currents on this single circuit uh but that's like master's level here we're not worried about that right now and I'm just going to interrupt you just just to kind of clarify because we're talking about the reason we're talking about AC or alternating current is because exactly. RF energy RF energy is AC or alternating current. Right, exactly. That's a very good point. Um, whether it's 60 hertz stuff on your wall outlet or 3900 megahertz, uh, 3900 kilohertz mm -hmm. on your radio, it's all alternating current. Okay. So we have to understand that reactance, which is still ohms, any sort of any sort of opposition to current is measured in ohms, whether it's resistance, reactance, or impedance. Okay, that's why they're all ohm. So this reactance opposes the current flow, but it does not produce watts. Okay, watts is power. Watts is power, correct. Right, okay. So it is basically lost energy. And that's the problem, is that more reactance is that we're losing that energy in capacitance and inductance, and we yep. don't want that. It's either, right. it, yeah, either, yeah, you know, it'll either be depending on, on how it's, you know, where the phase, it's either going to be capacitive or it's going right. to be inductive. Right. And you, you, when you study for the general, the extra, they talk about Eli, the Iceman, when it, uh, current and voltage are not in phase, there's not resonance, one leads or one legs, and we, and that's a whole, um, we, I could talk for an hour on that. But long and short of it is we, we always want them together. Is that's mm -hmm. that resonance is the most optimal frequency because at resonance there is no reactance, there is no yep. loss that is not be there is no power that's not being used and being radiated. Reactance doesn't get radiated. No. Okay. Now, resonance when there is no reactance or when capacitive capacitive reactance um, negates inductive reactance. Be, it, it's kind of high in the sky. Remember how we talked about an isotrophic antenna in, in some of our lessons? The, perf the, the perfect, perfect radiator. perfect antenna that does not yeah. exist because it's, it, it, it it's radiates perfectly, but yeah. it's impossible to have. Mm -hmm. So perfect resonance really is kind of impossible to have. We say an antenna is resonance, but it's not really re It's close to resonance. You have almost no reactants. Okay. And then everything is just pure watt. It, now it's all being radiated. Think of a think of an electric space heater putting out fifteen hundred watts. Everything going into those coils and just heating up. But there's 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 inductance in that because of those coils and everything. So we have this idea that resonance means fifty ohms and SWR one to one, and that's a bunch of baloney. 
Yeah, correct. Resonance is when you when your capacitive reactants, your X of C and your X of L uh, balance out to zero. And then you have a, just a purely resistive load. And that's mm -hmm. great because then that, that's just that's just radiating. Even if yep. it's not 50 ohms, rock it. We talked about this in this 4040. You had a 100 yep. or you had a 25 ohm load. 25 but ohm was, load, two to one but, SWR. But it was still, it was there was no reactance to it. So it was just nope. everything he was putting into that, with the exception of some of the reflective power, was radiating mm -hmm. out. And yeah. that's why you were just rocking 40 meters that day because you were very, very efficient. There's a yep. lot of antennas out there that are not 50 ohms at their feed points, and you could they will still radiate great. Absolutely. Yeah, really. so. And my Elmer, uh, Jerry, um, it took him probably two or three years to beat this into my head. <laughs> um, once I get it, I, once I got it and everyone else started talking about antennas, everyone else was wrong. And I could prove it to him every time. <laughs> <laughs> Michael was wrong. I think I proved it to you once. And it's, oh, it, yeah. it, it, it's, it's silly. But when you understand <laughs> this and how it works. So let's get back to reactance. So reactance does not affect resistance. Mm -hmm. That's why when we're talking about it in the general extra exams, we talk about it as an imaginary number, but we give it a J behind it, not an mm -hmm. I, because we get I can first confused with current so we put the j behind it so we got to go kind of back towards uh seventh grade eighth grade pre-algebra when mm -hmm. we were wrapping things out on x and y axis we always put our resistance on the x axis right we put that horizontally mm -hmm. we always put a rea reactance on the y act axis with inductive reactants x of l above and capacitive reactants below mm -hmm. okay now if you have 50 ohms of inductive reactants x of l and you have 40 ohms of capacitive reactants because you can have both you have a net reactance of 10 ohms mm -hmm. okay follow me on that I don't have a. I don't have the John Madden uh, telestrator or whatever he had. We need. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna need to get some visual aids here. Yeah, going, we're gonna need so. a few. We're gonna need a few more Patriots for that. <laughs> I mean, back to 1980s, 1990s technology here. We, we could get a few Patriots for that. <laughs> I'm sure there's something open source. But anyways, <laughs> so let's go to um, the Pythagorean theorem because we we're graphing this out. We have a. Um, right angle triangle now we can calculate the impedance a squared plus b squared equals c squared reactance squared uh, sorry resistance squared plus reactance squared equals impedance squared Ooh. okay and if you can figure that out as you lower your reactance to zero then your impedance equals your resistance hmm. So that that that's the five minutes uh, version of reactants, Alan. Um, thank you for coming. I think we we're closer to ten. <laughs> thank you for coming to my TED talk. My, my, like right there, um, that's like the first two years of what they teach about electrician apprentices is AC and DC theory. Right there, there's yeah. a lot more math behind it. Um, as your frequency changes, your reactants will change as well mm. because you already have it you always have it the same inductance in uh, inductance in millia uh, henry's or in henry's and in um farad's and capacitance but as the frequency changes your inductance and ohms change or your reactance and uh -huh. ohms changes okay and <laughs> that's the key too so that's why an antenna that work that's resonant at 80 meters ain't going to work at 40 because the reactance changes. The reactance changes. So, all right. We got some stuff in the chat that came up. First, I'm going to thank hey, you, thanks, Mike. Mike. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll get that for seven bucks. <laughs> we'll, get the, we'll get the telestrator going. So, 
I think I think at that price it's going to be like remember the old um, magic screen um, Bill Cosby had you know picture with page, the picture picture, picture, picture pages. pages? <laughs> Let's not talk about Bill Cosby. He's kind of sort of a persona non grata now, right? <laughs> oh, okay, the MRD got here and his brain is melting. So um... <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. And then finally, yeah, wire antenna wire only comes in two lengths, too long and too short. But so. that's 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 actually true. That's actually true. Go back, go back to that for just for a second. So, because we talk about that, because you really can't hit perfect resonance, Mm -mm. right? It's like infinitesimal resonance, like an infinitesimally small point that you know beyond microscopic, because anything past it, it has to be out of out of it. So it's either always going to be too long or too short. That really is true. But Mm -hmm. we get to a point where close enough is good for ham radio for for anything really because even a little because everything is going to have a little bit of reactance it's just the nature of the beast you're going to have a little reactance (laughs) so (laughs) people say well i have a perfect one-to-one swr is like okay great good for you that doesn't mean jack no it really doesn't i mean michael michael proved that just throw another 25 feet of coax on it you get great swr it didn't really change anything the ARRL antenna guide has got, I, I, sh, I, I got it highlighted. I should find the phrase there, but they say that um, with an um, infinitely long enough or with a, with a sufficiently long enough piece of RG8X coax, you can make any antenna one-to-one. <laughs> that is true. You'll burn it right <laughs> on. No, that absolutely is true. Mm-hmm. Let, let's get away from coax. The only reason we use coax nowadays Coax is so plentiful after World War II, they were giving it away, and it was at $50. Yeah. They were giving it away. So eventually someone figured out, hey, let's just put this <laughs> transmitter and it's at 50 ohms. And it'd make it better. But 50 ohms doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's that's the best. Mm-hmm. Um, no. Dave Kassler, KE0G, uh, 50 ohms is a, is a really good impedance, uh, impedance for audio. 75 ohms is a little bit better for the video and stuff. But realistically, Anything will match. Anything will yeah, match. Yeah. So. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Is and yeah, and then we use coax nowadays because it's convenient. Right. So, it's cheap. So. It's convenient. Yeah. Yeah. So put it together. And now that we make most of our antennas we're aiming for fifty ohms, right? Mm-hmm. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.